Book nerds like this dork always cry into their keyboards when a film or TV show based on a book comes out because in their opinion the books are always better. Screen nerds like these dweebs always go on about the special effects and actors and say they don't have time to read the books, this is why they watch the movies instead. And all round mega nerds like me go, ¿Por qué no los dos? Recently I have been thinking about the whole book versus screen thing a lot, especially since the new season of The Expanse has just come out and for the first time ever when it comes to screen adaptations, I am miles ahead with the books. But I still love the show, it's fucking awesome. So in this video I will explain what I believe to be the pros and cons when it comes to books versus TV shows and movies. Let's start with books. Personally, I mostly read non-fiction and get my fiction fixed with screen more than with paper. But that being said, I do read a fair bit of science fiction, but I wouldn't call myself a book nerd per se. So what's so good about books though? So aside from the obvious, which is you have far more space to tell a vivid story within a book, you also have time to process what's going on. For example, in the Game of Thrones the TV show, they had to leave out so much detail, characters, plots, and so on, because it just wouldn't work on screen. The show is complicated enough. A main reason for this is because of the standard TV format, which just don't have enough time to tell it all. Then you have to wait a week before the next episode, unless it's a Netflix series or whatever, but most people don't have time to binge watch a series, so a lot of information won't be retained, which is why you always have the previously on blah 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 or whatever. With a movie, you only have two hours, maybe three, maybe nine, to tell a complex story, and it's still not enough time. Or it's crammed and it feels rushed and you the pacing's all crooked. The format just doesn't cater for such detail, usually. With a book, you can pick it up every day and stay on top of the story, and you can also pause and process the information. You can't do this with a movie. I mean, you can, but stopping and starting a TV show all the time just isn't natural. It, it, it would actually be a detriment to the show. But this is not the biggest issue I want to discuss. The main reason I love a good fiction novel from time to time is that from a storytelling point of view, you get two very important things that you rarely get in film. You do get it sometimes in film, but it doesn't always work because it's very hard to pull off effectively. This is one, the first person perspective, and two, a narrator. In a book that is written from the perspective of a character, you get a peek into the mind of that character, their thoughts, their feelings, their aims, goals, woes, loves, and so on. This could illustrate their emotions, but also plot points like, I need to grab this to do this, and if I open this thing, this will happen, so you understand a motive behind an action. Without the inner monologue, a screen character has to illustrate their thoughts with actions and facial expressions, and although this is fine, it's more akin to what we see in real life, it's not as fantastical. As in, in real life, we can't read minds, we can't see what others are thinking, in a book we can. This is not exclusively a book thing however, a show like Dexter had the protagonist narrate every episode. It gave us insight into the mind of our anti-hero and it worked very very well. However, this is still a rarity as it often doesn't work so well and most shows and movies avoid narration altogether, be it first or third person narration. A narrator can also tell you what the person is thinking. In the Expanse novels this happens a lot. They are third person and the third person narrator will tell you, say, how Amos feels when he's doing something, like how he is filled with admiration yet disgust after squishing a giant poisonous slug. It's often quite hilarious. On screen, a mere facial expression might not convey the complex array of feelings and thoughts a character has. We don't often get a look into the character's mind. Speaking of narrators, a third person narrator in film is even more rare than a first person I believe. I haven't run the numbers though. A third person narrator is another unique book trait that not only describes the scene and characters but again gives us special information that we would miss on screen, such as funny witticisms or comments and again characters thoughts and feelings. When something explodes, you the viewer might go, oh pretty, but in a book the author might write, it exploded with the might of a thousand ruptured bowels after half-priced Indian night at the local food court. Or whatever, you know, I'm not much of a writer, but you can get some little humorous witticisms or, or more serious ones that you may not think of on your own. The point is that writing is not just about telling you what happens in the story, it's about illustrating, adding colour and personality, it's adding spices to the stew. It gives you insights into the mind of not just the characters, but the author as well. In film, you don't often get this, in this particular way, anyway. There is one major thing for me that you don't get in books, though, and this is why I love film so much. Music. We should all be able to agree that music evokes much emotion. Asking someone if they like music is like asking them if they like food. I know not everyone is a music nerd, but there are very few people who don't like music. I mean, I've never met anyone who doesn't actually have an opinion on music, except for like kids maybe, I don't know, like young kids. They, they don't know what's going on. They're too busy eating sand. The audio and visual thrill is why I love sci-fi and fantasy so much. I don't watch much drama or even thrillers or even that many comedies. I love hi-fi effects, and this is particularly important 
important with two major things, action scenes and music. Now, obviously you still need a, a good story, but sometimes you don't, sometimes the action is enough. Music can make or break a film or show. In Battlestar Galactica, the music is what got me addicted to the show in the first place. Bear McCrary, the show's composer, is a fucking gun and I'm a massive fan. Not only did the cast and story hook me, but the music held that show together and just breathed so much life into the series. But aside from just the soundtracks, music adds feelings. It sets the emotional, the atmosphere, the tone of the scene. Horror movies are a good example of this. In books, you don't have music. It's as simple as that. Action is another big one. As a martial artist and combat sports fan myself, but more importantly as a fan of fight choreography, I love good action. I love kung fu movies, I grew up watching them, and John Wick style fighting is a great modern adaptation of that style, gun fu if you will, and the Matrix scenes and all those other notable fight scenes, they get me fucking jacked man. It's unbeatable and you simply can't get this in books. You can, but it's not as good in my opinion. I have read a lot of fights in books and it can get convoluted and hard to follow. Writing a good fight scene, especially a punch up, is a very hard art form to master. It's hard to master on screen as well, but it's kind of easier to pull off. Good fight scenes are common, great fight scenes are far and few between, in books and in film, but you simply can't beat the tension of a great fight scene on screen. So for me, the biggest differences that affect my feelings and opinions between books and screen are insight into the character's thoughts and then the narrator's witticism and comments versus music and action. I'm not saying one's better than the other, they are completely unique and special, which is why I always say, why not have both? When it comes to film, as the saying goes, a picture paints a thousand words, but in a book, you can read minds. I have deliberately skipped a lot of things with this comparison, otherwise I would be here for ages. So, leave a comment. What do you think books or film do better or worse than each other? Thanks for watching.